Well, after finishing up step one and getting all the ribs good and straight, it was time to move on to step two. So step two of making this tank is to make these tank stiffeners. So this is the T1011 uh, piece of pre-drilled and cut shaped aluminum. And you basically, out of each one of these, you're gonna make four of these. And it's just a matter of cutting it along the little dimple and then cutting along the line between two of the other dimples to give it this kind of shape like that. Uh, and you're gonna make a bunch of these for each wing. You can do all of them at once and then just put aside half of them when you, for, the, for the other tank. You don't have to, or you can just not do them all right now and do them later, it's up to you. So that's what I'm doing now. So like I said, I chose to only do half of them. Uh, I did the left wing's worth of tank stiffeners, and I left the other ones uh, by the wayside uncut. I figured I would do them later. Uh, and then it's, uh, you know, cleaned them up a little bit, as you can see, but I really didn't go into a great deal of cleanup because I knew there was a lot more stuff I was going to have to do. Mostly I, I got the sharps off of them so they wouldn't cut me. But other than that, it was just... Uh, putting them in the old bandsaw, getting them, you know, cut and shaped the way I wanted them to. Uh, and then, like I said, moving on to the next piece. Uh, took a while, so this is going pretty fast. But uh, that's, you know, pretty simple. Next, I'm working on the Tank Attach Z Trim. This is sort of the same thing. You got to cut uh, several of them from one single piece of metal that you then clean up and will go across the back of the tank. This is the primary way the tank actually attaches. Uh, pretty cool, actually, kind of neat. And just like the other wing parts, there's the J-stiffener that you gotta go through and get ready to be used. And so here I'm clamping it to the table and then drawing the line down the center that will be used to line it up uh, for the various holes when I'm doing the match drilling. Uh, you're probably really familiar with this. This is something that you end up doing quite a bit on all the parts. Uh, I've done it on the wing, did it on the empennage. I have a feeling it's probably gonna be in the fuselage as well. So. Uh, again, nothing hard, nothing magical here. Just marking some dots, drawing some lines, and uh, making sure it's legible and clean. Easy, easy. And so here, you can see that I'm actually now using those tank stiffeners. I've pulled all the bluing off of them, and I am installing them within the tank. Uh, the idea is to start doing all the match drilling. So once once I have them all in position, uh, I go through, I flip up the tank, and I match drill all the parts to make sure that uh, you know it's uh, it's going to work. This is uh, this is again nothing nothing magical here. This is exactly what we do everywhere else. It's just a lot more of the same. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything difficult here. Uh, not really. I do know that one set of those stiffeners is slightly shorter, uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about when you do it. Uh, you just have to mark them. And I did mark them. Uh, I marked the inside skin and each stiffener with a number. So, you know, this is one, this one is one and the next one is two, etc. So that they always uh, match up. So they're always the same ones. Also, the cradle I've built to hold this thing is really handy. Uh, I highly recommend doing exactly what their instructions say as to build the cradle. I did go to Home Depot and buy a thicker, more sturdy piece of wood because what they had originally sent was basically a diagram drawn into the box top, uh, which I didn't think was very good. Instead, I traced a rib uh, on a nice piece of wood and cut it out to make the frame that's holding this whole thing. And I also put some felt uh, around the outside. It's actually like a loading blanket uh, that was in the back of my truck that I cut into pieces, uh, just long strips, and, and uh, stapled it around there, mainly because I didn't want it to mark up uh, the skin, which without, uh, without that, the, the wood kind of doesn't really dent it or scratch it even. It just kind of marks up the bluing more than anything. It's, it's a little scratch. I just didn't like that, so I put some felt. But here I'm just doing lots of match drilling of all the holes, and there are a lot of holes. It's almost like, like a wing part or something. Once I get all the stiffeners installed and match drilled, I then proceed to put all the ribs in. 
Uh, and it's going to be the same thing here. I'm going to put in each of the ribs and then drill and, and uh, match drill all of those. Uh, again, just like every other part. Uh, really, there is only like two or three processes involved in building a plane, every evidently, and then you just do it over and over and over again. Or at least that's how it seems. <laughs> that's, that's really what's going on. Um, you'll see me go back and forth and read the instructions a little bit there. I was making sure I had the right uh, part. Uh, originally, there are a couple places where the ribs will say, uh, you know, L versus R, and it's very easy to get confused which you're supposed to use. So I would say pay very close attention uh, to the instructions, but also pay attention to the diagrams, because there are a few times when the instructions will say R, but it very much meant L or vice versa, L when it meant R. Uh, so pay attention to the diagrams, because so far it seems like the diagrams are all correct. Uh, so, so especially when it comes to facings, like which way each rib is facing, that's, that's kind of important. And uh, you saw me do some cleaning up of the ribs. I was uh, using one of the scraper tools to make sure that the ribs were clean. And here you see me, I'm rounding the ends a little bit to make it so I don't have any uh, dimples appear, you know, little, little bumps appear on the nose of the part. Because that will happen. <laughs> you'll stick it in there and you'll stick it all the way down and you'll get it all clicoed into place. And because there was just a little bit of a sharp on the front of that, the nose of that rib, it will actually push the skin out ever so slightly and you'll have a little bump. And that's a, that's a sign. It's a very common thing, apparently. It's one of those things that my, one of my uh, advisors warned me of that, you know, you can always tell when it's a home, home built uh, kit or slow build kit versus a fast build kit by going and looking for those bumps. And if you see those bumps, you know, it was a slow build and people didn't really pay attention or didn't, didn't round the nose very well. And there is one, there's one on my, uh, my empennage that I'm like, hmm, wonder what caused that. And that's what made me learn that. So, yep. Round those nose ribs. Valuable lesson, I suppose. But here I am just continuing to assemble everything, get lots and lots of Clecos in there. Um, I'm generally putting a Cleco like every third hole for the time being because I'm not doing any, uh, any drilling yet or any uh, riveting or any of that stuff. I'm just kind of getting it all the initial assembly so I can go through and make sure I understand how all the parts go together. Uh, as with all things, you're going to assemble it and disassemble it many times. So just get used to it. Uh, and that's what's going on here. And then it's time to match drill all the holes and all the ribs. Uh, again, this is something that it's just like everything else. Take your time, put your audiobook on, and go to town. And yes, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, I, I listen to, uh, you know, Audible is one of my favorite things, and this is not a commercial. They're not paying me or anything, but I do listen to a lot of Audible I have for years. Uh, so I listen to audiobooks and I listen to, uh, a lot of digitally imported music, by the way. I know some of you guys in the past know that I used to put music on my videos and I stopped doing that because I got copyright complaints, which was really annoying, especially considering all that music is given away for free as podcasts. But, um, I listen to digitally imported radio. So if you go to di.fm, uh, I've been listening to them for years. It's also another really, uh, really good site. And again, I'm not getting any sort of remuneration for recommending them. It's just one of my favorite sites out there. So that's what uh, I'm listening to. You always see my headphones on. Uh, you can kind of see my little earplugs there as I wander around, and, and those are great. So fun times. Hey, match drilling. Drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it. And finally, before I bring this to a close, talking about the gas cap, uh, here I am setting the J stiffener and doing the initial drilling of it to, you know, get it lined up on the far end there. I just put in one and here you see me lining up and doing the initial drill on this side, putting a Clico in and then so on and so forth. On to the gas cap. Well, okay, at this point I've got <clears throat> the majority of the tank assembled. Um, there are obviously still some odds and ends that need to go. And if I lean this towards the camera a little bit, you can see it's still open at the top here. So all the, all the ribs are in and the stiffeners and whatnot. And the next piece I have to put on here is this fuel cap, uh, which will go from the inside, you know, like that. Got to line that up. Now, something that I'd like to point out is that the fuel cap, when they send it to you, these outside flanges are bent downward ever so slightly. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but you can see this side's a little lower than the center line and this side. Whereas if I turn it like this, it, it kind of looks a little different. But anyways, 
it's it's important that you get you figure out exactly where that curve is and I've put little arrows on the inside for fore and aft and line it up that way so that uh, everything will come together nicely uh, and then you also note none of it's pre-drilled so there's going to be a little of me figuring out exactly you know where here line this up as evenly as possible and then doing some some drilling uh, just in the blind well, at least once just kind of doing a uh, as close as possible match drill or, or uh, um, through through this piece you know drill uh, and then uh, do the rest of them so I want to make sure I do that right but it's coming together nicely um, it's just like any other piece uh, like I said, there's there's a, a J stiffener through here, a lot of little stiffeners on the inside, and then of course each rib. Uh, the rest of it's going to come together really quickly too, actually. So good times. It's not as scary as I thought so far. Really, more than anything, I'm I'm concerned about the goop, the uh, pro seal. That's the part that I'm just not looking forward to. So. And that's really it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to have lots more of these videos. I thought I'd put this little last bit in here. It's kind of funny. Uh, I got a phone call, and I like to pace when I get phone calls, especially when I'm talking to one of my clients, which is what I was doing here. And if you count carefully, I do like 30 laps <laughs> around my wing while I'm talking to my customer. Uh, it's pretty sad. I didn't even realize I was doing it and I, I had forgotten that I was recording. So I just thought that was kind of funny. I need like yakety sack playing in the background. Anyways, thanks guys. See you later.